Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to another episode of the Remarkable Coach Podcast. As ever, I am your host, Michael Pacheco, and today with me I have Kim Skirmer. Kim has over 20 years of experience. She transitioned from senior executive management to found the Approach Coaching Method, amassing over 25,000 professional coaching hours and mentoring hundreds. Passionate about genuine conversations, she's been pivotal in guiding financial professionals in business ownership, facilitating seminars, and making notable speaking engagements. Her trademark beyond the product is grounded in timing, preparation, and personalized perspectives. Why, that alliteration, man, that's great. Um, <laughs> and, and underpins her five division structure aimed at sharing wisdom, fostering community, and promoting a balanced work life vision. Kim, welcome to The Remarkable Coach. Thank you. Thank you. I would, that sounded really good. I'd hire me. <laughs> it's, it's the alliteration, the preparation and personalized perspectives. I, I love it. I love playing with words. It makes me so happy. <laughs> uh, Kim, as always, when I, you know, when we kick off uh, this podcast, I always like to invite our guest. Um, we just, I just read your bio, of course, to just tell us a little bit more about yourself, kind of in your own words and tell us about what it is you do and why it is you do what you do. Hmm. <clears throat> It was that transition from senior management to on my own. So I've been in the financial services world for 25, 24, a couple of decades I've been there. And watching and always seeing and taking inventory of, you know, what's missing and where does the approach belong? And it's that whole part of what I saw that was missing in the gap in the industry was something I could not foster and grow from the boardroom. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's just, there's certain places and time and scale, right? So when the opportunity came, I took it. And, and so that's kind of that whole part of in so many businesses and practices and industries, when there is a distributor, right? And a carry of a product, and then someone is out there selling in that product, we fail to treat it as a business. Mm -hmm. And that's what I saw is that we were doing a really good job of, making people employees or having a practice, mm -hmm. but there was this fail, right? And this, this, this uh, behind the times approach of making someone a business owner. And it is that true business development thing. So that kind of led me into going out on my own and hanging my shingle up. Well, it was three years ago, but I'm practicing for two years and it's been absolutely incredible. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Who Thank are you. your, uh, who are your clients today? Who's your, who's your ideal client? Mm -hmm. Who do you work with? I love, there's a couple of ways I explain it, but my favorite is it's the high achievers. So I strongly, and it's my beliefs, but I believe that when someone comes into business in their first couple of years, I'm not the right coach. And I usually don't think a coaching, a business development coach is the right coach for them in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It is that, that incredible defiance that happens, right? Cause we're opening up a business and we're imaginative, we're creative. We are so married and involved with our baby, our newborn mm -hmm. that nobody can really, or you're not ready to hear about the structures. So you need to go on this journey. And I'm the coach that stands at the path of your, at the gate of your path. So it's that whole part of go screw up, go learn your lessons, because until you go do that, you're not going to be able to listen and learn from anybody else. Be open to do that. So my ideal clients are the ones that appreciate good design, structure, understand flow, state of mind, mm -hmm. understand it is that whole part of there will always be this ongoing noise around us. And the best position of strategic intent and structure is from a place of calm, not from a place of hype and excitement. Mm -hmm. So those are my clients that will understand that it's going to take years. That is it, bite by bite. The end of one goal is the beginning of another. It is that true high achiever niche market expert mm -hmm. that I coach really well. And are these, so are you still, you know, in the bio, you mentioned, you know, guiding financial professionals in business ownership. Mm -hmm. Are you still working primarily with financial professionals? I am. I am. And it's, it, it is very interesting. I get a lot of inquiries of, Hey, I, I work in X, Y, Z industry. Can you coach? And, and I did do some in the beauty industry and a little bit in the real estate and things like that. Cause a, a business is a business is a business is a structure. So it's, it's that whole part of understanding when you have a niche, you either coach from a place of expertise mm -hmm. or you coach from a place of empathy. Mm -hmm. So you've had the shared experience or you understand their emotions behind what they're trying to build. 
Mm -hmm. So if you can do both of those, it's great. You can coach in any realm, but we always need to define time. So, or define down. So it is that part of financial services. I'm booked. It's whatever. We're August. (laughs) I don't even know what month we're in and you can't get in to get coached by me till where am I sitting now? August, August, September of next year. Okay. September 13 months away. Yeah. 13 months away. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. So it is when you're really good at what you do and you're very clear of who your ideal client is and you are absolutely committed to saying yes to the right people and saying, no, I'm not the right coach for you, but go try this person or here's all this stuff for you for free. Mm-hmm. Go learn this first and then come back. Mm-hmm. That honest, authentic conversation that's what we're lacking and and we're missing in the business world, my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I agree completely. I think, um, you know, from my perspective, coming from a, the perspective of a marketing agency, yeah. you know, we're, we're all on LinkedIn. So we've all gotten those, uh, those awful, <sighs> awful outreach messages on LinkedIn <laughs> saying, I will fill your calendar, you know, with leads. <laughs> and what yeah. they'll do is they'll fill your calendar with garbage because they're just yeah. trying to sell you, they're trying to sell you anything, whether, you know, whether you need it or not. Yeah. Um, whether it's right for you or not, they just want to, they just want to push their, their crap on you. Yeah. They're, they're crap on you or they make this assumption that you need leads, mm-hmm. right? I'm, I'm booked out 13 months ahead, right? I don't need leads. So it's even that whole part and I call it getting pitch slapped, right? I've just been pitch slapped <laughs> and I'll tag you on the post next week as a marketing brain. You'd love it. Nice. And I've got this guy's face and this chicken rubber chicken slapping him across the face. And it's this pitch slap. Uh-huh. And I purposely even on LinkedIn because people are getting so creative with their, with the pitches and all that kind of stuff that it would, and with their AI that I actually have Kim and then in brackets, Kimberly. Mm-hmm. So I know automatically have I just been pitched or is it AI or, you know, are they, are they seagull hunting? Right. Like it's, it's that whole part of of being very mindful of people coming to you and even working with the PR agency I'm working with now. I almost said no to them because especially women, it's so sad, actually. I, I, I would hate to be, and I don't mean to say it this way, but I'm going to, being a middle-aged man, you're forgotten about right now. But the women in business and 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 the exciting topics, women are pitched all the time of, I'll put you in a magazine cover. I'll do this. I'll do that. Boss lady. And I'm going, this is ridiculous. I get pitched two or three times a day at least. Hashtag at least. boss lady. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag boss lady. I'm like, I'm not a boss, babe. I'm 50. Leave me alone. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, that's great. So, so where do you, where are you getting your clients these days? So you're, you're, you're booked out 13 months. That's amazing. By the way, congratulations. It's awesome. You're clearly doing something right. Um, where are you getting your clients? Where are you getting your leads? Is this all like word of mouth? Are you, are you crushing on, on the PR front? What are you, what are you doing to get clients? So I am working with a PR firm, but we haven't even done anything together yet. So I'm, I'm a little afraid when that happens because I, I hesitated so much starting with them because uh-huh. I'm going, I don't have time right now to dedicate to this. Uh-huh. So we're, we're building things slowly. And it is that that you're from the marketing world. It's it's that one brand tagline that everything I do, you know, kind of leads back to this, this, this nebulous. Right. Sure. And so all of my. <laughs> My leads, my business, everything is coming from me standing in my true authentic self. And the incredible part of it was a podcast. Mm -hmm. That's when everything rocketed. And there's, there's something that happens without knowing that when we do start a business, people are going to sit and watch for at least a year. Are you going to make it (laughs) right? There's this, this subconscious thing that happens with people. So they know that you've had experience before, but it's different when you're hanging your own shingle. And so it was like everybody waited for that one year, which I had that gut feeling because I've done so much business coaching on the corporate side. I knew that was going to happen. So I made sure that I had enough capital for a year and a half to live on, to put bread and butter on the table so I wouldn't make any stupid decisions uh, from desperation. And then the podcast came on and I was so intentional with the podcast itself, how to market it, how I was going to market it, what I was going to say in that conversation, who the podcast was. It, it was incredible to do that. And from that podcast, I got 11 clients. It went I was almost viral. And that was the incredible learn from that is could have been a podcast, could have been me doing a YouTube channel, whatever it may be. Sure. It's showing up as your true authentic self and nothing beats that marketing, I think. 
And was this a, was this a podcast that you were a guest on, or is this a podcast that yes. you launched and hosted? I was a guest. You yeah. were a guest. What yeah. was the podcast, if you don't mind my asking? So it was the Proud Mouth podcast the first time I was on it. So okay. you and I reconnected when you heard the second one, when they brought me back on of saying, holy crap, it's been a year and a half and you're killing it. What's going on, right? Uh -huh. So that first one, I, I told about my experience of leaving corporate, um, the mental the mental wellness and the struggles I had, mm -hmm. um, all of that kind of stuff about living your first life and second life, right? There's a totally different world in the beginning. We're build, 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 trying to get our identity. Who are we? We're doing all the stupid things. And then in our second part of life, someone taps us on our shoulder saying, hey, <laughs> you're being an idiot. Let's get rid of that old ego because uh -huh. that's not the true meaning of life for you. Uh -huh. Right. So it's that whole interesting part of whenever what he talks about the women in their 50s or what or they, they laugh and call it a midlife crisis. No, it's that part of going, I want to be this person. I've hit the effort button and this is me. Right. Uh -huh. This is me. Like you don't care anymore. And that's an incredible piece, but you just don't understand what's happening, uh -huh. right? So it's there's there's such incredible things with psychology and business, and people don't accept or embrace behavioral economics or psychology and business marketing. All of those pieces, uh -huh. huge, huge. Yeah, I um, when I first started doing marketing consulting. So I started doing marketing. I was playing in a band and, and, and DJing in Japan. You have to promote your shows and promote the tours and all that. So that's kind of where, how I got into this. And then when I started doing it uh, professionally as, as a consultant, I spent a lot of time uh, studying cognitive science and behavioral psychology, mm. consumer psychology, um, because it, it is, it's, it's, it's huge. And, and it, and it can, it can, inform so many things not just as a marketer right but as a business owner because as yeah. a business owner you need to be doing marketing too right you're you're a marketer you're you're in sales especially as a new entrepreneur in the first two years yeah. you're wearing 10 different hats yep on a good day yep <laughs> if you're lucky yep <laughs> yeah um and and yeah having that deep understanding you know, or even, uh, you know, I don't know about deep, but having, you know, a, a modest understanding of, mm -hmm. of why people do what they do. Um, I mean, that'll help you with everything from product design to product market fit to marketing yourself mm -hmm. to connecting with people on a sales call to connecting with people on a podcast. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it, you know, it's why I trademarked beyond the product, uh -huh. right? Financial service is 100 and some odd years old, right? And everything's about you know, indexes and this and returns and, mm. you know, term versus permanent insurance, the everyday consumer does not give a flying rat's ass what the hell the difference is. They don't care. Mm -hmm. All they care about is, am I going to be okay? Mm -hmm. That's all it is. And it's that part of being okay is what is my legacy, my face of legacy? Because sometimes we want to carry on the Smith name, Mm -hmm. Or we want to completely change everything on the Smith name and not be part of that old world or, or whatever. And it's so, so individualized. Mm -hmm. And it's why I named my company the Approach Coaching Method. Actually, my parent company's name is RST Private Planning Group, which stands for really sucky things, which is awesome. Because <laughs> <laughs> everything about financial services and especially on the life insurance side, it sucks. Talking yeah. about it sucks. Buying it sucks. The outcome sucks. <laughs> and it's having some humor about life and death. Because uh -huh. how exciting is it to meet someone, talk about if you smoke or not, and you're hiding it from your spouse. You got to pee in a cup. You got to get some blood. You got to talk about all your fight. Like, there's nothing fun about it. Uh -huh. So if you can't connect on a human level, just another person talking to another person, forget about it, especially the way the world is going today. Uh -huh. There's there's a reason why the TikToks or the Finfluencers and all that kind of stuff who are not educated or regulated are kicking ass mm -hmm. on this stuff. They're selling courses on this is how I invest. And I'm going, oh my God, please don't listen to this. This is horrible, but that's a really cool dance. And that really makes a lot of sense, but you're not protected consumer. Mm -hmm. So advisors start having these conversations. I love it. I love it. So for you, right, you're, you're booked out 13 months mm -hmm. and you're about to engage or you have engaged with a PR firm, but nothing has gone public yet. Yeah. You know, basic 
economics 101 supply and demand there's only yeah. one kim skirmer but the demand, <laughs> demand is, is theoretically going to continue to go up yeah. what is your plan for that are you going to start developing courses and do one to many type coaching are you just going to raise your prices like what's your what is the next what does the next 18 months look like for you and it's that whole part i'm i'm a weirdo i've i've made my big money already i've i've done that I, and it's not i'm not attached to the dollar I'm attached to the utility of what I can do with that. And okay. so there's one thing that we do right now already is, is we do donate 5% back to the community. And I do a lot of work with um, high risk youth. Okay. And so there's some, some, some nice dollars going that way with the kids and, and indigenous kids, like just this people that don't understand and have been forgotten about when it comes to basic budgeting. Mm hmm right? Basic budgeting. And it, my, I cry when I'm sitting there at a youth, you know, retreat, and we're talking about life insurance, and someone's passed away, and they say, well, we're not allowed to get life insurance, because we're too high risk, we'll never get it. Like, oh, right? It drives me insane. But the the future, Kim, it's that part of I had three large companies wanting to buy my courses, I built them all, I have over 150 different um, PowerPoint presentations and courses on business development which is within financial services which i could swap out the name and say real estate or market like i could swap out the name for any of them <clears throat> sorry excuse me and i thought to myself again about practicality of how many people is this actually going to reach because what i'm doing it's all about helping the industry as a greater whole mm -hmm. so number one they have to buy the course and then number two, they actually have to finish it. And only 70% of people actually finish an online course. Yep. And that's if there's a degree in designation at the end, mm -hmm. right? And then they got to finish it. And then they actually have to implement it and wait a year to see if they've had any results. And I'm going, okay, that's like a three-year span timeline before I even get any PR back because everything in business has to be mutually beneficial. Sure. And then the other companies that were looking to purchase it from me were down the, down the road and, and talking about the deal. And I'm going... Again, it's going to be only captive to that one business that I decide to sell it to. That doesn't make sense. So I've taken the month of August off and I am putting everything on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Everything's going on YouTube. I'm giving it all away for free. All my workbooks, all my courses, all my tools, snippet, bite by bite pieces, because that's authentic to what I committed to do in the beginning and mm -hmm. helping people with that baseline and foundation. And then the part comes from the marketing approach of mm -hmm. I've tested a whole bunch of marketing pieces and things like that. And one marketing piece, and you probably love it, it's a shot of a laundry room, someone's laundry room in their house. There's laundry up to the roof. And all I captioned in there is, really, you think I have time to talk about life insurance? <laughs> and it's brilliant. Like the advisor I tested it with, because I had this test group, that brought him over $200,000 worth of commission. Mm -hmm. 17 appointments, 16 stick, stuck. And that's lifestyle marketing. Yeah. Like that's what people, I want to see myself. I want you to understand me. I don't give a shit how many designations, alphabet soup you have behind your name, what's going on in the marketplace. Do you get me and care about me? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's good. That's good creative. I like that, uh, that, that, that image and that, that, that question there. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. What, uh, Kim, what is a typical, what is a typical engagement with you look like? Mm. When you start with me and you find me and we book a discovery chat, um, I believe number one of giving one hour away for free. So one of my big beasts in any industry, especially with coaches and sorry, guys, if you're listening to this, please don't throw eggs, but we go out saying we're important and you're important and we want to help you. Mm -hmm. And then we give you a 15 minute discovery call. <laughs> what the hell is that? Right? Mm -hmm. Nothing says you're more important than 15 minutes of time. Because right. we know usually it's not till your third or fourth appointment when you really start to get to know each other. Mm -hmm. So mine, it's a one hour discovery call. We agree to move forward or not. And then after I finished that first discovery call, I said, by the time we book our next one, I want you to talk to at least two other coaches. Mm -hmm. That's very important. So I make them do that. Once they do that, we get back together. I put a proposal together and we look it over and we agree or we edit or whatever we need to do. And then from that moment, we follow the playbook that I make directly for them. And I brand everything. It has their pictures. It has their colors. It has their branding. So I really approach coaching from a marketing perspective because 
coaching, yeah. marketing, leadership, marketing, everything is design, right? When I said good design, mm -hmm. good design in and, and listening to what people want, not what you need, what do you want? And that's incredible. So in my, in my two years of fully operating, I've lost one proposal, two proposals, two, I think I haven't lost very many. Mm -hmm. My batting average is extremely high because it's number one, go check out other people. Mm -hmm. Come back to me if you want. And the other part is I specialize and I and I do everything. And everyone says, Kim, you should be charging 35000 a year at least for your coaching. Mm -hmm. I do a deep dive for $7,000. <laughs> and you get a master coach for that amount. I don't believe I should be charging five times more than a therapist or a psychologist. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I just think there's there's some dirty things behind that, in my opinion. Uh -huh. It's that part part of... Yes, pay for my money and the time and what it all looks like in affordable pieces. Have your pricing applicable to your ideal client that you're working with, right? And and along with your expertise that you associate with. So some are worth that amount of money. But that other piece is I have one, two, three, I have seven different incomes coming in from sure. different passive ways, right? Because I do advisory boards. I work with the big companies. I do all that kind of stuff. That's where my big bucks come from. Right. And it, and it kind of depends right on, on the, you know, what level of value are you, are you delivering? You know, if you're, if you're doing a kind of business coaching, that's going to directly affect the bottom line, maybe $7,000 a year is too little. <laughs> oh well, yeah. Depend, right. Exactly. Right. Like who's your client? What are you doing? Yeah. I, I'm helping them with their framework. Right. right. And then we, if we start working on more, you know, then I'm, I'm on a retainer and then, then different dollars start coming though. And if we're getting that baseline, right. That deep dive, it's not thousands and thousands. This is what it is. If we do something different, go up there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. It's it's always fun to, to chat about different pricing strategies and pricing structures that, that different coaches and consultants have. I enjoy it anyway. It, it's it's interesting theory that one, one of the more successful um, groups that I have had the pleasure of working with is strategic advisor board yeah. and they charge percentage of mm -hmm. revenue increased. Yeah. Full stop. There's, yeah. there's no onboarding fee. There's no setup fee. There's no fee to get started. If they think it's a good fit and they think they can help, they will charge you a percentage of revenue increased and they are doing incredibly well. Very, very brilliant. Well. And it's, it's, it's and it's great really because it's 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 essentially risk free, right? Yeah. And, and, it, and it's going to be a win win for both parties, or it's not for both yeah. parties. Like and nobody or nobody loses anything except right there the consult they lose time. That's about it. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. It helps you stick to your ideal client, right? It helps you. It helps everybody stay authentic. It's awesome. I love it. And and what a great uh, you know it's it's not even it's it's beyond a guarantee. It's yeah. just it's just zero risk. What, zero. A, what a great way to approach a business relationship. My God. Yeah. yeah, no, I love it. I absolutely love it. There's so many different, like you said, there's so many different models out there. It's what makes sense to you and your ideal client and where can it grow to, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's got to have room to grow. I think that's, that, and that's a difficult one, right? As much as I do love that that model, you can't, you know, when you're first starting out, it'd be I think it'd be very difficult to start that way because you need... Some need money. money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, don't, you don't have cash flow. You're not in business. Yeah. You're, not, you're not paying your mortgage. Yeah. You yeah. got you got mouths to feed, um, uh, and so on and so forth. But man, when you when you get to a certain level, I think you know I, I would I would love to grow Boxer to the point where we're able to make that offer and say you know oh. what we're just taking a percentage and that's it. Yeah, my journal's going in my head, going exactly like that's a couple of years when I have everything because I'm building the retreat and I'm saving every penny and dime to rebuild and I need full cash for that. So it's like, okay. Yeah. But it's to that point of having it on that percentage growth, that that's I think it's really cool. I think it's a really cool concept. Yeah, that's a brilliant one. Yeah. Uh, tell me about, you know, you've been you've been rocking this for about two years. What what have you mm. what have you struggled with in the in the past two uh. years? to, you know, what have you struggled with to overcome, to get to the level of success that you're seeing today? First, thank you for asking that because so many people are afraid to talk about it. 
Yeah. Like there's days of her, I, you know, I've sat in my bed, sucking my thumb in full fetal position. Nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. I'm going to go eat some greasy, grimy worms, right? Uh -huh. These big mean people are saying things to me. Why is nobody liking my posts? What like this crazy tape that goes through our heads. Call and, the conversation. Oh, it's, it's, it, yeah. Well, like I've named it. Like I call her Becky. When Becky shows up, like when Becky shows up, I'm in trouble, right? Yeah. And so it's it's that whole part of staying on your true path. And I think that's where this next step of an evolution of my business of going kind of that beyond the product to find the calm. We all have this incredible storm around us and it's only going to get noisier. We live in a sensory overloaded world mm -hmm. and is even more to come. So how do we lessen the noise and act from a position of strategic intent and calm? Because nothing, nothing good comes from hype and overwhelm and overload and over sensory. So it's that whole part of the calmest place of a storm is the eye. Mm -hmm. So it's that whole part about find the eye and find the calm. And that's my mm -hmm. next step of speaking to that because that's my experience of overcoming and getting to speak with the confidence and the confidence I speak to. Mm -hmm. And people say, Oh, wow, you're so confident. I'm like, I've gone through a shit storm. And there are still some days I'm, I'm like, you know, where's my mommy? I want her around to tell her I'm still pretty. Like there's <laughs> just this stuff that you need once in a while. Right. Sure. And, and the higher you get, it's really funny too. When you're first starting to grow and nobody really knows who you are yet. Everybody's your buddy and everybody's cheering. And then there's this weird thing that happens when you actually hit this really high upper echelons. Mm -hmm. They don't cheer anymore, right? There's this weird thing. The mean girl club comes or the whatever, like there's some weird things that happen. So it's that whole part of I've had to learn how to trust my gut. Mm -hmm. I've had to really learn that the best lessons come from when I lean into attention. Mm -hmm. So if someone or something has pissed me off, there's a reason. Mm -hmm. And when I figure that out, and usually when I get pissed off, that's when I do something really great afterwards. But it's not because I got angry from a place of anger. It's because I leaned into it, right? I've yeah. learned of maturity. But I think that is the, the biggest part of listen to your gut. Mm -hmm. Make every decision from a place of calm. Only 16% of our best ideas and decisions come from while we're at work. So go for lots of walks. Go mm -hmm. splash in puddles. Go enjoy environment in your family. Don't be a workaholic. It's not about 10xing your income. It's about 10xing your time. Mm -hmm. that's what you should be striving for. And it is you, there's only one you. So stop reading all the damn books. Stop trying to be everybody else. Stop trying to be Dan Sullivan. Stop trying to be James Clear. Stop trying to be all these things. Go be you and have your own voice. Cause you can't, nothing will stay in your brain. It won't be authentic. I love it. Yeah. I love it. That's great. Thank you. Um, Let's flip that around now. What about, uh, you know, some big wins? Talk about some, <laughs> your, some of your big wins in the last couple of years. <laughs> Getting an email from a PR company saying, hi, we crew <laughs> Mel Robbins, Grant Cardone, and we want to work with you. And I reply back saying, yeah, great, awesome. And for $16,000, you put my face on the front of Tycoon Magazine, you little 16-year-old snot-faced, acne-faced kid. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you're not even believing it that this is true, that this can happen, right? Mm -hmm. Um, that was that's been really cool, actually. And it's and it's this funny thing. We're we're planning and working to do a lot of things. And and it's right from this agreement of from the beginning of trying to understand and where we're coming from, what does this look like? And me thinking I'm I'm negotiating this amazing deal when they actually have plans for me for something else and us not understanding it and me getting into a big fight with uh, one of the head guys because we didn't understand each other and he mm -hmm. saw something I didn't see and and it's bigger than I ever thought it could be. And it is so interesting to see of sometimes you just, you don't know what it's going to feel like, where you're going to be or who is going to be beside you when that big moment happens. Mm-hmm. And when that big moment happens, oh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> when that big moment happens, it's this weird, what in Wally world, where am I? Mm -hmm. And what have I done to deserve this? Like, is this true? Is this real? And how do I not let this go to my head? Mm -hmm. So it's this whole part of 
these are really cool people. And I tested them. Like I, I went in full on, took me two, three months to make the decision. And I asked them some really hard questions. And I said, I don't pay to play. If you think I'm as awesome as you think I am, you're coming to the table as much as I am. Mm -hmm. And and it's this whole Mm -hmm. bit of conversation of what does it mean to be successful? And I, a lot of my mental health issues that I had before Mm -hmm. is because I've always had this thought and this want and this Mm -hmm. desire to bring forward this bigger, greater message than most people want to. Like when I die, I want to know I've left this earth, that I've helped so many strangers that I don't know their name. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they lived, but I was that person there for them at that right pivotal time with that message they needed to hear. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's what I know I've had a fulfilled life. And the funny thing is I'll never know, but everything I do and act towards kind of keeps me on path with that North Star. Mm-hmm. of everybody's listening your niece is listening someone else's niece is listening nephew's listening so that's that big big part so the the big success is to finally be discovered in a part that i would never imagine but the best part about it all is no matter what the outcome is of all these plans we have i'm going to learn so much incredible stuff in the next seven months i don't care if it doesn't make to tv or whatever all these plans are right it's like Oh my God, I get to learn so many cool things. I was talking to the Bloomberg boys. I was talking here. Like, it's so cool when you get to hang around that higher end successful people. Because sure. I kind of hit my top, my ceiling, and now I get to get bumped up again. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. It's really cool. That's awesome. Thank you. That's awesome. I love it. Um, Kim, uh, what three books do you recommend all of your clients read? Oh, <laughs> so it's funny when I say Dan Sullivan, Who Not How. It's a great I one. read Who, Who Not How, I've read seven times, eight times. Wow. And that is the incredible thing because we always forget. And again, you kind of said it in the beginning, right? We left employment because mm-hmm. our boss was making us do everything, take care of everything. He's like, oh my God, you're gonna make me do another thing. It's not my job. And then we go open up a business and we do everything and we have a hard time letting go. So it is that 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 biggest part of finding our who's. So I think that one's really, really big. I recommend. Um, the other one that I recommend my clients to read is The Surrender Experiment, mm-hmm. which is really funny too. So Michael Stinger uh, writes that one. And it's just that it's not wooey, but it is wooey. And it is that whole part of, again, just surrender. Mm-hmm. Just let go, surrender. Sometimes we hold on to things too tight. And again, if we're psychology, our bodies tell us when we're not in a good place. And if we're contracting mm-hmm. and we're holding on to things, we can't think. Our uh, uh, parasympathetic nervous system's not working, things like that. Mm-hmm. So, how do we relax? How do we let our shoulders drop? How do we work from a place of expansion? So, I love that one. And it's kind of repetitive, but it hits your brain. And I feel like surrender experiment's a good one for an audiobook. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's an audio one. I tried, I tried really hard to read it and it, it, it didn't work very well. Uh, I kept falling asleep, but it was a good drive. It was a good driver thinker uh, audio book was that one. And this one's girly, but this is the one because there's part of, I, I spent a lot of time getting to know my clients and I'd like them to get to know me. So my mom died of pancreatic cancer and I took three months of my life. I left my job, all that kind of stuff, and didn't leave her side for three months. And her favorite book was Eat, Pray, Love. Mm -hmm. And so I read Eat, Pray, Love to her 5,842 times. Mm -hmm. And when she passed away, um, I can't pick up that book ever again. I just can't. I try and I just can't, but it sits on my shelf. But she came out with Big Magic afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I liked Big Magic because it was about her writing for her and being her true authentic self. And there's the one part in the book where she just talks about do again, everything for you. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, it's not searching for people to like you or like your stuff or your content or your opinion or agree. It's that part of stand up in your true, amazing, authentic self Mm -hmm. and write for you. Mm -hmm. And if someone so happens to love your message, amen, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And it's like one of the Derek Shivers uh, YouTube of um, how to start a movement. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it's that one about, you know, he's downtown like a crazy person and someone comes join and, you know, now you have a movement. Now you have your first follower. It's that same theory. So 
I like suggesting that one because they understand kind of who I am. And it also kind of speaks to, again, that find the eye, find the calm, do it for you, nobody else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember, uh, I forget, what's the author's name again? Um, From Big Magic? Or yeah. I forget her name too. I totally just lost her name. Yeah. So anyways, I remember I was watching some interview with her and her name is on the tip of my tongue, but at any rate, um, I'm watching an interview with her after she wrote Eat, Pray, Love, like years afterward. And, and, and she was working on her second book and she's just, or she had published a second book yeah. and she was talking about writing for herself. Mm -hmm. And she said, just imagine like the, the first thing you do you come out of the gate and it's like the biggest hit and like it's all downhill from there all all that's left is to do it for yourself like you're never yeah. you know you're you're never going to do that for the for your fans again no when when you explode straight out of the gate like that and all that's yeah. left is to just do it for yourself and that's the most important thing i thought it was it was, it was I, i'm butchering the synopsis yeah, yeah. The interview, but I, but it's, you get the idea yeah it's that part so i was a i was an ex-national athlete like i yeah. was you know fit 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 at age 44 i had to have a double hip replacement gain 50 pounds all that we all have this fear and fear is a wonderful thing and it's a horrible thing mm -hmm. and so when success mm -hmm. comes or our identity or our change it is so interesting and i love elizabeth gilbert Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> no, we have a winner. <laughs> Yay. And, and so it's this part in this moment of, it is so important of, you've hit this here. So I've, I've hit, she understands, this is my top of my success. I'm happy, right? I'm happy. This is my, this is my defined success. Mm -hmm. Who gives a shit what everyone else thinks is success? This is my defined success. So now everything else I do for me. So it is that part of I had to learn too, where I could no longer paddle or compete, and my old crew is going off to worlds, and I am home about to go in OR where I can get operated on. It's that whole part of okay, this is this was my this was my top. What's next mm -hmm. in this new identity in this new life of mine? Yeah. yeah, it's cool stuff. I dig it. Awesome. Kim, um, is there anything else that you would like to chat about that we haven't not yet had an opportunity to touch upon? No, no. I thank you so much. I think I met you about a year and a half ago when I was a year, two years Sorry. ago, maybe in a study group or something when I was first starting my journey. Yeah. And you were the one I was looking around the Zoom room, right? The COVID time in the Zoom room. And you definitely were one of the ones, and I even said it to you, I'm like, you're cool. <laughs> I want to get to know you. And I don't know what we're going to do together. Uh, I have no idea what it looks like, but um, you're not getting rid of me. And thank you very much for having me on your podcast. Thank and I you. can't wait to have you on mine. Yeah. Awesome. Let's definitely do that. Thank you so much yeah. for making the time to chat with me today. Congratulations a million times on all your successes uh, mm -hmm. to date and, and hopefully, you know, many more uh, in the years to come. Thank you, honey. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you, as always, to our listeners and viewers, you guys. This podcast is nothing without you. So thank you so much for, for tuning in and, and listening. Um, if you know someone who you think would benefit from this podcast, please share this with them. Um, give it a like. Give it a subscribe. Do all the things that you're supposed to do with podcasts. Appreciate it so much. And we will see you guys next time. Take care.